Hi, this is David Mize from David Mize Music. I'm back with part two of our tutorial on uh, looping with virtual instruments using Reaper and M Super Looper. Uh, the assumption here is that you have A, seen part one of this video, and if you have not, you should probably go back and look at that first, and uh, B, that you know how to operate M Super Looper by Melda Productions. Uh, if you don't, stop now, go find yourself a tutorial, and then come back. All right, so first uh, a word about workflow, about how this is designed, about what we're trying to do here. The design is to have Reaper simply act as a host. Uh, it will host the instruments as well as the Looper plugin. But uh, M Super Looper is going to do most of the heavy lifting. So the design here is to create several songs in M Super Looper. Now they're presets, but we're going to call them songs. Uh, so we're saving them as presets. And within those songs will be track configurations and uh, preloaded loops. In this instance, for me, it'll be drums. You can load any loops you want or not load any, lo load any loops at all. Uh, choose uh, to add a virtual instrument to do your own drum programming, however you want to do it. Uh, and then we're also going to save a set of MIDI presets that will be included in each song, although we'll only have to do that once. And keep in mind, though, that if you update the MIDI presets, you'll need to not only save them, but also save the song uh, that they are in. So let's go on to setting up M Super Looper. So first thing we'll do is our MIDI presets. So let's get our plugin up here. Double click here so we can float it. Get rid of that. And here we have M Super Looper. So the first thing we're going to do is MIDI presets. To do that, we're going to click on MIDI. Now by default, you'll see that the controller tab is selected and that it has a set of pre-selected controller uh, events. Now uh, the pads on my controller play notes rather than CC messages. So I'm going to disable controllers. And then I'm going to move over here to notes. I'm going to enable notes and uh, we'll start from there now if you do want to get rid of these controller events you can simply highlight them one at a time and hit reset that'll delete them but it's tedious and frankly I don't care so I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to disable that and go over here to notes we'll enable that and we'll start from there so what we need to do is create a series of events here that uh, will control the functions that we want on M Super Looper. Uh, and we're also going to create some events that will control M Super Looper and Reaper simultaneously to select and record our instruments. So I'll show you how to create the events, and then I'm going to show you my presets, and I'll also have them listed in the description below. So the first thing you need to do is select the parameter that you want to control. You can do that one of two ways. You can click uh, Select Target Parameter, or you can simply double click this position in the list and it will come up. Uh, so um, we're going to want the ability to toggle recording off and on globally so this is a good place to start so we'll start with the record parameter and again you can highlight it and click OK or you can simply double click record and it will place it in the list here uh, for you. So we need to decide what is going to be the mode of the parameter it's over here and then also what note we're going to assign to the parameter that corresponds to the pad uh, or note or uh, uh, knob or whatever you're using your controller for so uh, for record we're going to select switch and we're going to do that because each time we hit this pad we want to toggle record on and off. Now there are several uh, options there and if you choose the wrong one you can always change it uh, later easily enough. So we've selected the mode, now we need to select the note that we want to, uh, to have there. Now the way we do that is by clicking on learn and then selecting the pad or whatever on our controller. Now you'll notice that when I hit these that uh, 
I get different notes. So there are several different notes going on here. And so I'll just pick the one I want. And for the time being, I'll pick that guy right there, which you can't see. So I don't know why I'm even referring to it. Um, so we've assigned it a note, clicked on learn. Now, if we turn off learn and uh, go over here, can see it's already on but if we tap that pad there's record on there's record off record on record off so we've done that and of course now because we don't want this thing to do anything else we'll leave that for now we don't have to um, do any sort of reset at this point but anyway that shows you recording off and on so that is how you assign a note or a pad to a function and then uh, have it there now of course uh, what we have to do then is save our presets once we've got them all set up. So the way you do that is right here. Now there is a presets at the top of the MIDI settings. You'll also notice that there's a presets up here at the top of the global window. We'll get to that in a minute. But for now you want to tap presets here and you'll see it'll open up to this window. Now on the left pane this is all about folder management here. Uh, which you may or may not want to change, but on the right side is the actual preset management. You'll notice that I already have a set of presets and we'll look at those in a minute. Uh, so if you wanted to save the presets that you currently have, you would click Add. If you wanted to replace uh, these presets, you could click Replace with that highlighted and it would basically overwrite it for you. There's also Load if you want to load a set or rename or delete. We're not going to do any of that at this point, but I just wanted to show you. So that's what you would do is uh, save. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you the uh, presets that I already have set up. Uh, so again, we'll click presets and you can click my uh, presets here. I can either click that and hit load or I can just double click them and they'll load up there and then I'm going to hit close. Now I want to explain these to you fairly quickly. Uh, the first one is fairly obvious, uh, record. We just want to toggle record off and on. Uh, the second one is also fairly obvious. We just want to be able to toggle the reverse in whatever track is currently playing. It makes for some interesting effects as you're uh, performing and going through. Uh, this one simply is your uh, previous track, so you can select your previous track there, or your next track, so that just allows you to scroll up and down uh, through the tracks. And you can see right now if I do that, that it'll just move up and down through there and uh, select a track. Now these next three are where a lot of the work gets done. Uh, so track one, track two, and track three select and record. Now what we need to do is make sure, because remember I told you when you were setting up Reaper to remember the pads that you assigned to these instrument tracks over here. Right, and each track when it's selected is armed for recording. So what we want to do then is set the same pad for these corresponding tracks over here so that it will select an arm recording in the uh, M Super Looper tracks as well. So if we've done that correctly, we can hit these and scroll down through here and select and record on any one of these tracks. So see, you'll notice that it's moving not only in Super Looper, but also it's selecting the corresponding instrument track over there in Reaper. So that's the way that we can then uh, perform uh, and, and create different instruments and create a performance together. So that's what those are for. I left an empty space here in case I decided for a track four, but haven't done that yet. Uh, now, track four in the, the song that we'll be looking at is my example here. Track four is where the drum loops are. So we want to be able to select loops one, two, three, and four as they're loaded in these corresponding slots. What that gives us the ability to do is have four different beats. So I could have one basic beat. I could have three fills. I could have a basic beat, two fills, and an ending. I could have four completely different beats, whatever I want to do. But by cycling through those assigned loops, it will uh, allow me to change the rhythm. And so we'll see how that works again in just a second. 
Uh, and then the last four here are all assigned to the same pad. And now the purpose for this is, is fairly simple. I'll get this out of the way here so we can see. Um, so what we want to be able to do is turn off and on play on all four channels simultaneously. Mostly the reason we want to be able to do this is so the last time through everything we can hit that and when we get to the very end of the loop then uh, it will stop. Uh, I couldn't really find any good way to actually stop this thing once it gets rolling so I thought that was probably the easiest way to do it. If you've got a better idea feel free to jump on board. Uh, now for reasons you'll see in just a moment when you're getting ready to load your song you're going to want to have those all toggled off. Okay so let's go on. That was a lot but that's actually the biggest part Sorry, had to do a quick edit there before we went any further. So we've got all our MIDI presets set up. We've got them all saved. And now what we're going to do is load our song or preset. Now up here, if you don't have any song saved, this will say default. But I've got one already saved and I've already loaded it once. I'm going to load it again. So I would advise you then to uh, create all your presets, save them with song titles, uh, freeform jam and A flat. Uh, if why you'd ever want to do that, I don't know, but you know, go ahead. Uh, and then save them all here so that you can load them and then perform them. And I'm going to pick this one right here and load it up. Now, you'll notice as soon as I do that this loop starts playing. Any loops that you have preloaded in your song will immediately start playing as soon as you load the song. But the reason why you're not hearing anything, of course, is because I've got play toggled off on all my channels. Now I did that on purpose on my tracks. did that on purpose so nothing would start playing immediately whenever I uh, started. But I'm going to toggle it on now so that we can give a listen to this groovy track as it starts up here. Okay, so now we've got some rhythm. Now you remember I set up my uh, controller so that I could cycle through the loops as well so that I could have some different rhythms and things like that. So by hitting uh, that pad there, I'll change to loop number two, which is uh, completely different. And then of course, I'm gonna go back to loop number one and because I've set it up this way, I can also go ahead and you'll see there, activate the reverse so that we can uh, listen to track one or loop one in reverse, which is an interesting sound, but nothing that I necessarily want to work with right now. So let's go back to uh, forward play here as soon as that gets done, and we'll listen to it one more time while I explain what I'm going to do. So the pad's playing, and the first thing I want to lay down is some bass. So what I'm going to do is select my track three, select and record, You'll notice when I do that that my Reaper track is selected as well, so let's do some bass. Okay, and I hit the record toggle to stop that, so now I can listen to that. That sounds pretty good. I can, uh, you know, go with that if I want to. Now, if I'm inclined, I can listen to it with my second rhythm track and see what that sounds like. So now let's lay down some piano on top of that. So we're going to select track, arm track two. And when that comes around, band playing here. So at this point, I don't necessarily have to record anymore, but I do have track, piano track activated, so I can just go ahead and jam over the top of it. Nothing's recorded, just gonna keep going with that. So, you know, but 
for the time being, I guess, I'm going to go ahead and arm track one and put myself a little lead on here. I have no idea what I'm going to play, but we'll see what happens. everything didn't stop playing it just stopped playing out loud because I toggled play off and on uh, now I'm going to reset all just to stop everything from moving but uh, keep in mind that if you reset everything you are going to have to reload your song in order to get things rolling again now <clears throat> I'm fairly certain I've left something out uh, like I said I'm not a professional I don't claim to be uh, and while I'm uh, hoping that this is helpful, I also totally wouldn't mind if someone commented and said, you idiot, you're going about this entirely the wrong way. Here's what you should be doing. And then did what I tried to do in a much better way, because then I would learn from that and it would help me. And that would be wonderful. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you can use it to get out there and do some live performing. And so good luck. And God bless, and I'm just going to play for a little while longer. Feel free to turn off the video and leave when you want to. So here we go. Thanks again. Have yourself a great time. Enjoy performing. And uh, let me know if there's a way to make this better. <laughs>